Well, this guy is Captain Redbeard. Now, some of you might not know of him because I haven't done a video on him for a long time. Newcomers, there's been a lot of subscribers since the last video I actually showed him in, but this is my better fish, Captain Redbeard. He's been with me now for, well, getting on for a year, actually, and uh, he's doing really well. Um, but I'd like him back in the house, so that's why I've decided to make a nice new tank for him. And this is gonna be his new home. So really nice Opti White glass tank, 600 mil, 400 mil, 400 mil. Gonna fill the water level up to about this sort of area, roughly. Nice big load of, you know, ferns and wood and rock all coming out of the top, like proper aquatorium style. You might see a lot of people on YouTube doing aquatoriums with this sort of black plasticky stuff to create a framework. I just like to use, you know, natural stuff to do that. It's nothing against the other way. I just like it better this way. I just think it's a bit more natural. So yeah. All right, first of all, we need to get some substrate into the bottom. So I'll show you what we're doing for that next. So I've got a coarse gravel. Nope, that's the coarse gravel. Fine gravel with sand, tropical substrate, which is like a nutrient rich powder, and then a bucket to mix it all in. Yeah, I probably made way too much there, but it's better to have too much than not enough. So anything I don't use, I can just save. Uh, so let's get that in the tank. Oh, there you go. Now we don't want to see any of this horrible gravelly dirt at the edges, so just push it away because that's where the aquasaur is going to sit. Okay, that's all looking great. Next thing I want to do is place my mini landscape rock, which is the rock that I'm using, all into the corner so that it's almost on the base already. And then when we pour the aquasaur around it, it will lock everything in and it stops it shifting later on. And here is all that rock. Look, you can see we've got quite a good selection. Well, that's quite hard to tell the sense of scale. There's my foot. So we've got some nice big pieces there. Going to give us lots of options for the tank. Okay, I'm adding the aqua soil now because I want to have it all completely locked down. I want to have all this substrate layer completely locked down before I put any sort of stones in. So I'll just put a, an inch thick over the whole lot just to cover it. So that's the layer in, you can see it's an inch thick at the front, it's actually up higher at the back, it's hard to tell from this angle, but that's where most of the rocks are going to be sitting in that back corner there on the right, and then piled up, you know, in sort of a triangular sort of composition. So we'll start on that now. Right, so that's partly there, that's looking really cool really 3D. I'm trying to move it around so you can get a sense of sort of the nooks and crannies and whatnot. Now it's time to actually fit the inlet that I've got there for the filter. That's why I've left that gap there so we can get the inlet right to the bottom there and it can just be, have a proper filter in there rather than just an internal filter. I want a nice big canister filter from Oase. They've sent me this awesome canister, the Biomaster. You've got to have a look at it in a minute. Right, well it's raining so I've got to be quick, but Tropica have sent me these, this awesome, look at that, piece of bogwood with all the ferns all on it. Now this has grown out of water, therefore it's already converted to out of water state. I've got that, I've got a little trident as well. 
I'm not sure if I'll use the Trident though, I might use, save that for a, another build. I'm not sure how much impact a small one's going to make when you've got something like that. But yeah, let's get that in the tank as well, see how that looks. So that's what's so good about the Aqua Decor range from Tropica is, look, done. <laughs> Could be done, but no, I've, I've got a lot more planned, but it already looks cool, doesn't it? Like, that's how good it is. I mean, yeah, you spend a little bit more money, than, but you've got that straight away. I don't mind doing that's For me, that's completely worth it. Like, it's brilliant instantly, right? Let's crack on, though, with some more stuff. I want to get some... Obviously, we've got full planting on the bottom. I'm going for a full dwarf... Dwarf? That's not... <laughs> A full dwarf hair grass carpet. I've also got uh, my first pressurized CO2 kit coming as well, which is the, the CO2 range from Tropica. It's, uh, it's meant for nano tanks, but obviously with the water level being around here, it's like gonna be about 50 liters, which is, come on, that's a, that's a nano tank. So it's up to 60 liters the kit's for, so it'll be perfect, yeah. Right, well, let's crack on with getting the planting done. Okay, well off camera, I just laid those bits of wood the top there just just experimenting really just to see what it looked like because i want to give the impression that we're at the edge of some sort of like tree stump that's going into the water something like that and i think that looks really good i'm not quite sure about that one spiky one so i might see what other bits of wood i've got but you know i'll leave it there for a bit see if i like it if i do i think we're onto a winner here guys so i've just broken off some twigs from some of my other tanks i've got some wood in there so it looks more mature it's darkened just like that bog wood is so I was going to put like clean new Redmore root in, it just looks silly, so I've just snapped some off, just place them coming down to give the appearance of roots. Okay, really happy with how that's turned out. You can see here, look, I've got got all the twigs sort of coming down to make it give the appearance of like a root system and then you've got the whole stump of the tree tree up the top coming down root system so next job is going to be to start doing some planting i'm going to plant all of my short plants first which could be all the dwarf hair grass all across the front now i've got three pots um, so i'm just going to divide them all up into small portions and start planting Right, well that's all the dwarf hair grass in. I've now got a load of Glosso Stigma to put in as well. Or Glosso, gl Glosso, something Glosso to go in the middle. Okay, so filtration wise guys, I've been a little bit spoilt really because I've got the Biomaster 250 from Oase. Yeah, it's got an awesome built-in heater. It's got this pre-filter section here, which you can just do that, pull it out, and that's it, it's awesome. You've got like a whole section that you can clean, pop it back in, and you're ready to go again. So I need to get the pipework fitted for this, and then I can flood the tank.
Right, so that's all the basics done. Um, I've also got a plant growth system nano for the CO2. Now this will be my first time using pressurized CO2, but obviously given the sort of carpeting plants here, um, I think it's gonna be worthwhile. It's gonna look really good. I, I want a full coverage, you know, real quick as well. Within a month, I should be able to get a full grass coverage all over the bottom there. It's gonna, really gonna make Captain Redbeard pop with his red and purple colors against that green. So yeah, let's get this fitted. I've never done it before. It might take me a while, but pff, such is life. Right, so now we just need to add the last final details and I've got three pots of the Anubius and three bots, bots? <laughs> three pots of Booster Philandra, wavy green, uh, two of the One True Go Grow of the Hygrophila Pina Fittada and the Hydrocottle Japan, two of those. So these, they're all staying above the water line. As well, I might put a little bit of the Anubius below the water line, but like the hydrocottle will spread really well in between all of those ferns up there. It's going to look awesome. Get nice reds as well coming from the hygrophila, which will you know, add a little bit of contrast above the water, apart from just the green. But I want to keep it all green below the waterline because obviously Captain Redbeard is really red and vibrant and I want to keep it that way so he stands right out in the water. It's been a day since set up, well, it's the next day, and you can see the water's a little bit cloudy. Now, remember, this is a completely new setup, this one. So there's not been any bacteria in it at all yet, not even any cycled media, because um, I didn't have any available, because I've been using quite a lot recently. So I've got some safe start from Tetra, which is just, you know, like good bacteria. I'm gonna dump all that in now. We can put Captain Redbeard in, but it's looking really good other than the, you know, slight murkiness, I think. CO2 is going nicely, one bubble per second. We've got a nice little waterfall. Yeah, looking good, right. Dump this bottle in. Right, everyone, guess what? The tank's ready for Captain Redbeard to go in. Is that good? Yeah, it looks very good with the carbon dioxide. Yeah. Yes, it's got carbon dioxide in it as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go get him.